My name is Dr. Rick Sigill. I'm an action. Hey, uh, Jay had a... This is Kirk to me. And action. Hey, everyone, it's Dr. Rick. And Jim had a question about using medical cannabis for pain. So the, you would think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but if this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then the alert button to find out when I do new videos. So medical cannabis. Those of you who take medical cannabis, you or that I've approved, you probably hopefully are dialed in after the th first three to four months of getting your card. Uh, those of you who are not dialed in, meaning you haven't found your recipe for medical cannabis. So uh, those of you who don't take medical cannabis probably won't get this. So um, an anti-inflammatory is a one class of medicines in uh, Western medicine that works for inflammation and pain. Um, diphenhydramine or Tylenol PM is one class of medicines. Actually, it's two. It's Tylenol, which is acetaminophen, and then diphenhydramine, which is an antihistamine. In this case, it's more for the antihistamine part. But antihistamines work to make you sleepy, and that's it. And sometimes they work to decrease your... Um, allergic rhinitis or your allergy symptoms, and that's cool too, but, so you see how the medicine is built for its category. Okay. Well, medical cannabis is just a plant that has so many pervasive things that it does. Now, we have our own endocannabinoid system. Anandamide and 2-AG are two very potent chemicals or hormones that we secrete, and they work to affect uh, healing, happiness, cancer fighting or cancer surveillance, continuing with uh, fighting infection uh, uh, and, and getting old without disease. Uh, but if you look at the medical cannabis plant, that's a phytocannabinoid or it's outside the body, but a phytocannabinoid that happens to do the same thing as your own endocannabinoid. That's why it's so cool. You have a plant that actually works to stimulate different parts of the, what the body normally does. And the cool thing is that if you uh, can't make your own uh, AEA or anandamide, that's another name for AEA, uh, or 2-AG, if you can't make that stuff on your own, your own endocannabinoids, you can take the others from outside the body. And a lot of times you won't be able to do that because you'll, you're in chronic pain, you have acute pain that's just superseding normal human threshold, or you have some disease process. Oh, uh, and that's where you, if you're too burned out, like in um, like the testosterone. Uh, testosterone, if you're too uh, beat up, stressed, poorly slept, testosterone will decrease. If you have a lot of stress and you're a female, you won't have your period or the period will be off because your hormones decrease. If uh, you are constantly uh, uh, shifting schedules like my police officers and my firefighters, your adrenals will decrease because they're not well kept or the organ system is not well kept. So if you can't maintain your own 2-AG and AEA, then you can try the stuff that comes in your medical cannabis plant. So uh, Jim had seen me three months ago for the 90-day card, and I gave my initial suggestions, uh, but I hadn't seen him in three months, and he didn't tell me what was going on. And uh, I, I think we have a lot more potential to get benefit from with regards to back pain, numbness and tingling, sleep disorder, I think we have so much to benefit from that I, I told him, well, I told him I'd do this video. So uh, this is what I would do. So I um, have a couple of different approaches on what I expect from the use of medical cannabis. Uh, number one is always to take care of inflammation. I think it's the easiest thing to impact first. Let me stand over here. So the easiest thing to impact first is inflammation. And uh, that is where I suggest uh, whichever dispensary you choose, some form of high dose CBD. I really think that the oral CBD will get you to levels in the bloodstream, just like your own anandamide and 2-AG, that will help with the healing process. Whether it's a trauma, like a motor vehicle accident, or a pinched nerve, like a bulging disc, post-surgical repair, or an autoimmune disorder. Uh, I think there are great values in controlling inflammation. But inflammation uh, likes to sneak up on you, likes to turn on uh, a couple times a day with your activities, because we're humans, we always go out, we always move, we're supposed to, and when you have a pain issue, 
and you move, it's going to make that hurt. Or if you have a bowel problem and forget the pain from a motor vehicle accident or a surgery, if you have irritable bowel syndrome and, uh, or Crohn's disease, you're going to, you have a meal that doesn't agree with you, you're going to flare up your Crohn's. So again, inflammation control, even in the role of the gut, important. So uh, I think it does help whether it's autoimmune, a cancer that you're fighting, uh, or just pain and spasm. Inflammation is number one. So two to three times a day. I usually suggest, I'm conservative because I want my patients not to be too freaked out from spending too much money. I suggest uh, CBD orally two times a day. If we have the money, three times a day. And usually when you take the CBD, there's a hint of uh, THC in it, but usually not enough to make you high, which would be fatigued, dizzy, or tired. Uh, or forgetful, I'm sorry. Uh, but that's the first step. Second step is to hopefully improve quality of sleep because most of you hopefully will go through a little bit of rehabilitation, exercise, or movement, or work. And sleep is when we rebuild muscle that was stressed out or pushed day before. Sleep is also when we rewire the brain. So if you're trying to learn a, a new concept, go to therapy, uh, problem solve at the job, um, any kind of skill that you're trying to learn something, proper sleep is when the brain rewires that or fine tunes that. There are things called microglia. They're like white blood cells of the body that search out for damage, fibrosis, or infection. If you have this set, special set of a microglia in the brain that kind of um, uh, tidy up the message. So if my mouth tasted a new food and it went into my brain and the middle of the brain sent it to the front of the brain and said, I like this food. The front of the brain put it into the memory in the hippocampus and I will always have that. But sometimes if I also watched a movie and or had time with my, my kids or spend time with my wife, there are other things there that uh, might mess up that signal, mouth to midbrain to frontal brain to hippocampus. And the overnight sleep, if it's good, if it's good, rewires that so it's nice and tidy and it's put to memory. So if you don't sleep properly, people don't remember. They don't remember the concepts of what they were studying the day before. They don't remember the problem solving for the challenges at jobs uh, from yesterday. They don't remember, oh wait, I put my keys over there. So uh, oh, they don't remember the new, the new path to get to your new job. So those things are really important and that's why sleep is so important. And again, for muscle, even if you just do a little bit of rehab, the muscles to rebuild depend on a good night's sleep. So if you're tossing and turning, if you have restless leg, if somebody's snoring next to you and you're in a little bit of sleep, or if you have PTSD and you can't sleep, then you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to control the inflammation. So sleep is the next best thing. Whether you, this has to be usually oral, oral CBD, uh, dominant stuff. This can be oral or inhaled. Uh, topical usually doesn't help with sleep. Uh, then this, the third challenge would be taking care of muscle spasm because this uh, always comes with pain. Whether it's the area that you're dealing with that's painful, that's just spasmed because it's tightened, it's trying to heal itself up, or whether it's you overexerted, you did a little bit too much the night before, uh, you pushed in rehab too much, you, what, you're going back to work and you're testing the waters to see if you can tolerate your usual job performance, you can expect a little bit of muscle spasm. And when you have muscle spasm uh, or the symptoms of neuropathy, uh, irritated nerve, numbness, tingling, and burning, that would be the next goal. And that usual, usually that goal can be covered with topical. I think topicals do a decent enough job. Topical would be a cream or an oil. Uh, a lot of the creams also have capsaicin mixed in. That's, that's from peppers. And it works to uh, distract uh, the pain maybe decrease the spasm. They also have menthol, and menthol works to distract by cooling. So you have heat and cool, or you just have the oil uh, if you're just dealing with that. So muscle spasm, topical. So we have oral, oral or inhaled, and then topical. And those are the first three. Next, if you can, brain pain. So the problem with um, dealing with pain is that uh, when you're like this all day long, you can actually spasm the muscles around the brain because you're just irritated. 
or it's just too hard to get out of it. So you see when I'm doing like this, it makes you create headache. So if, with headaches, even if, you can, even if you didn't have a headache from the original problem, the suffering sometimes will make this come on later. Or if you're still working on your sleep, you will have headache or difficulty with problem solving, brain fog, and that's where we're supposed to try to get the oral stuff in. So you might be able to get good uh, brain pain control with the anti-inflammatory CBD dominant, or you might have to go to a fast reaction inhaled. The vape, uh, unfortunately, the CDC hasn't released their uh, findings on the investigation with the e-cig crisis. However, uh, there is smoke. Uh, I'm, I don't usually suggest smoking because of the burnt tar, and this is just an assumption that sometimes down the line, I'm sure, if you do smoke, especially frequently, and you shouldn't be smoking every hour. Uh, if you smoke frequently, then you can have uh, tar accumulation, not as much as uh, tobacco smoke, but it could be an issue. Anyway, uh, uh, until the CDC clears that up, smoke, flour, uh, or if you have a volcano from Europe, that's even better. Uh, once they say we're okay with e-cigs, uh, medical marijuana uh, uh, society, then you can go with the vapes. Um, sometimes you can find some tinctures that you put under the tongue that will get absorbed fast. Um, it depends on the condition of the mouth, though. So brain pain, very important. And then finally, and not finally, but also while we're talking about the brain, the hippocampus is what I talked about. Hippocampus is the part of the brain that uh, usually deals with memory. And if you have post-traumatic stress disorder, you'll have the amygdala in the brain, that little almond-shaped uh, organ in the brain. It'll turn on an alarm system. Like usually when you smell smoke or you see impending doom, the amygdala tells the rest of the brain immediately turn on. So it sends a message to the frontal brain and the frontal brain asks the hippocampus, is this proper? Then the, then the body reacts. But with post-traumatic stress disorder, sometimes, or just chronic pain, uh, you can think you're gonna be in a motor vehicle accident if that was your issue, or you can think uh, somebody coming up towards you is a, a, a assailant, or you can think a muscle spasm is a heart attack, and then your fight or flight system goes off. So sometimes it's also important to rewire that. And that's what therapy is for. I'll put the link down below on my, uh, for my video on counseling, really important. But as you're going through therapy, you have to change, in therapy we're changing your belief systems. If your belief system is, I am the diagnosis of cancer, or I am a Lyme disease patient, or I am back pain, then um, even if we make improvements in those things, you kill the Lyme, you cut out the uh, cancer, or you fix the back, you, if, you're, if that's your belief system, you'll still adapt and treat yourself that way. So counseling is very important. And sometimes even with counseling, this hippocampus keeps on saying, no, 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 I wanna be back there. So we use, you can use medical cannabis to calm that down. And again, that, I think I have a, a video on PTSD, so I'll try to link that down below too. But, but you can't do it without a counselor. You really can't, so you have to have somebody help you with this. And chronic pain people too. If you're chronic pain and suddenly we ease up on your pain, you might still be a chronic pain person, so you'll still behave that way. You'll still walk around like this, you'll still say, oh, don't touch me. Uh, or you'll still be apprehensive on driving long distances. And that's the belief system that we've adapted. It's probably our fault as far as the multiple diagnoses that we have in Western medicine, but counseling, uh, psychology, um, social work that will always help with pushing that away. And finally, the gut microbiome. I really think if you have anybody, not, not just people with disease and suffering, anybody with weight, you really have to take care of the gut microbiome. And believe it or not, oral, CBD, and THC stimulates the gut microbiome. That's why I think you have so many good results with cannabis and oral cannabis and Crohn's disease oil cannabis, and IBS. I think that the gut microbiome benefits from that. Gut microbiome also benefits from a good night's sleep, but you can do both uh, with one product. So you just have to find that product. I mean, I don't want my guys sleeping all day or high. I don't want my drivers to have any problems, but uh, this is a probiotic that I just picked up. I change my microbiome every three months, or I should say I add to it with a different probiotic every three months. But there are some nice studies that show if you have a good probiotic, it also improves the way the 
gut absorbs oral CBD slash THC. So important to consider. Uh, in addition to a whole food, mostly plant-based diet, I think the gut also needs fiber. So if you can't eat fiber, then marshmallow root, uh, slippery elm, or a DGL chewable, that'll be good enough. It provides the house, the biofilm for these guys to hang out and, plen and replenish. So when you have a good m gut microbiome, you'll also have a tolerable mood. And when your mood is good, when your mood is, mood is improved, then the belief system's easy to change. So uh, that's my usual for the use of medical cannabis. Um, whatever you do, because uh, I'm seeing this with a lot of patients, everybody's got these chronic diseases that they say, okay, now I have a chronic disease, now I can get my card because I fall into the categories. And yes, that does help, but remember, I don't want you to have that assumption or develop that belief system that you are the diagnosis. There's always ways around it, but sometimes you have to change the way you think. And I love Wayne Dyer's shift. Uh, just so powerful a movie. If you've ever seen it, you'll know. If you haven't, uh, try to rent this. Uh, I just bought the CD. It was like 10 bucks on Amazon. But it's really important and really powerful on how you can change things and you're not too old. Uh, and then I put this on my video with the counseling. Uh, Lipton's information on how the mind can change in a bad way or how the mind can be changed in a good way is really important. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea, Jim, about uh, what we're doing with the medical cannabis. Yeah, those of you who have found your own recipe of sorts, uh, please put your comments down below. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next Mini Clinic.